Australian or Africa Chamber of Commerce is um, establishing itself as the gateway for many businesses who are looking to pursue trade and investment. And of course, we're absolutely delighted that we have the opportunity to work with Austrade, with DFAT, and now the Export Finance Corporation in this partnership going as forward. As Duncan said, I have a personal interest in Africa. Uh, when I was at Monash, we had a campus in Rudaport, which was on the North West Rand. Uh, and I would go to South Africa at least four times a year. Uh, and whenever I had the opportunity, I would travel around South Africa, so I've seen quite a bit. Uh, and then I'd have the opportunity to go across, across to Botswana and across to Tanzania. And uh, then I also had the opportunity to go up to Ghana. Uh, so I've spent a lot of my leisure time as well as my professional time in Africa. So when I have the opportunity to come here and to meet people who feel as passionate as I do about Africa, it's a privilege. Uh, so the Why Africa seminar series is led by Austrade, but supported by DFAT, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and we have uh, many representatives of DFAT here today, and it's fantastic to actually get to meet them face to face. Uh, we also have the lead for our region, so Ian Halliday, who you'll meet in a moment, uh, but he looks after Africa on behalf of Austrade, so it's fantastic to have Ian here and also my colleague here in the WA office, so Jane, and I'm sure you all know Jane, she's the state director here in Perth. Over the next 30 years, Africa's population is expected to increase from 1.1 to 2.6 billion and the IMF forecasts its economy is going to grow at 3.5% per annum uh, and stabilising closer to 4%. So if Australia could actually pull off that growth rate over this uh, next 30 years, I think we would be, fair, we would be very happy with that. Uh, so the seminar series is an excellent addition to Australia Africa Week program, uh, which continues to go from strength to strength uh, and we'd like to acknowledge the hard work and support of Duncan and the team at Australia Africa Chamber of Commerce. Without their support and uh, commitment, this event would never have happened. So thank you very much, Duncan, for that. In today's program, the Australia Africa Chamber of Commerce will outline opportunities for Australian firms in key sectors such as mining, education and training, food and agribusiness, services, and importantly, technology. And I think this is a really important Af sector for Africa, uh, because what we see in Africa is that African countries are leapfrogging uh, some of the uh, legacy technologies that we have in Australia. So, for example, in banking, uh, there, it's no longer necessary for the community to be banked. You can use fintech products and you can skip becoming uh, someone who is a banked individual. So the technology coming out of Africa is also exciting. I was very impressed by the work that our colleagues did at our, when I was at Monash at our South African campus. Uh, and we had a faculty of IT and it was just extraordinary the work that was being done at that campus. Uh, and I suppose uh, the necessity uh, breeds excellence. Uh, and they were also thinking, these are the educationalists, they were also thinking about creating open source software, not software that where you could sell it and make money. Uh, in the education space, it was open source, so everyone could have access to education platforms. So they were seeing education more as a right rather than something that should be commoditised. So Australia's resources sector leads in our commercial engagement with Africa, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and Africa is home to 30% of the world's mineral deposits, uh, where we've got about 165 Australian mining companies who operate in 34 countries across Africa. Uh, and a significant number of those companies are actually mining supply companies or in the METS area. And they can use state-of-the-art technologies from Australia and take them to Africa.